This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hi there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Jessica's Robotics. And in today's video, I am going to go over the correct way to do the soldering for the budget dual 15 amp speed controller that I sell and how you can use it in an SSP kit or any other robot. Now I'm reshooting this video. I very rarely take down videos, but I might take down the original video because I had completely misinterpreted the way in which this was intended to be used. And it's leading to a lot of people complaining about their robot not driving properly. I'll get into why that is towards the end of this video. But for now, I just want to correct that mistake. Another reason is because you can now buy JST connectors on JustCauseRobotics.com, or at least you will be able to shortly after I film this. And these can make it even more convenient to swap motors in the heat of battle. So I'm going to show how you can use these in place of just direct cutting these wires and direct soldering them to your motors. All right, with that intro out of the way, <clears throat> let's get started. I'm going to try and breeze through this a little bit because I don't want to be here for hours. Now, because I'm low on dragon motors, I'm going to be showing, for example, how to solder with Viper motors, but it's exactly the same for the dragon motors. Both of them have the same rear motor uh, backs, and they have a red dot and a not red dot. So all you have to do is identify which thing has the red dot. Get your motor PCBs, and you'll see on the motor PCB, if I zoom out so it'll let me focus properly, you've got your motor side and your not motor side. So you want the motor side to be facing into the motor, obviously. And you've got a red and a black. So we're just gonna line the red up with where the red dot is. And same on this one. And then solder that in place. Now for this, I like to have my iron at around 250 degrees or a bit higher than that Celsius. So I've got my iron here and some solder. And we're just going to touch the iron here and then get both the tab and the board hot and feed solder in until it pools around that tab. It makes a good connection there. And then repeat on the other one. Next one. Perfect. Now we are going to tin these pads here. I've just ordered a new version of these PCBs that'll have a slightly larger hole here, but it should look basically the same once they arrive. So we're just tinning those so that there's a little bit of solder pooled up. As you can see, hopefully there, I don't know how in focus that'll be. Great. So now there are two different things that you can do. Option one would be to cut these wires and option two is to use JST connectors. I like the option of adding JST connectors to your motors because then they become kind of hot swappable. So I have two here, I'm gonna use as an example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of flush cutters and I'm going to cut these to about yay long. Just gonna throw away these excess wires that I don't need. So, I don't know if I have a roller handy. Cut them about one inch long or about, you know, 25 millimeters or so. Next, we are going to strip back the insulation on these. These are pretty small wires, so I'm using the smallest setting on my little wire stripper here. And they're stripping back about four millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch or so. Now we twist these guys. Alternatively, you can just cut the uh, M1 and M2 sets of wires you can see coming off the back of the speed controller. So you've got your M2 here and your M1 is kind of covered by these wires here. Um, so we could cut them back so that they are 
roughly 80 millimeters long, so basically right before the JST connector. And then cut and strip those instead of from the JSTs. All right, next we're gonna do is just tin the JST connectors. So we're gonna spread these wires apart. We're just gonna add a tiny blob of solder to the ends of those wires so that they don't untwist and it makes them easier to join to the boards. There we go. Now we bring our motors back in here. Now this is the, the part that differs from how I did this before. What you're gonna wanna do is solder one of these black to black and red to red. Now if you're doing with this JSTs, it doesn't matter which is which because you can just plug the motors in differently later. And the other one, you're going to actually flip so it's red to where it says black. And black to where it says red. You would do the same exact thing with this if you wanted to just cut the wires and solder directly, but it would be the M2, M2 that you would solder backwards. So you would do the red to where it says BLK and black to where it says red on the board just for the M2 one, which is this guy over here. Um, and this will become the motor you put on the side of the robot that is marked left. For an SSP, that is. Um, so what we're gonna do is simply plug this in to the M2 and plug this in to the M1 and now our motor wiring is completed and we can put this in our kit and see how it goes. Now for the sake of example, I already have a, have a completely built kit here, but I'm gonna show how to wire to the motherboard outside of your kit because you could use a motherboard in any robot, it doesn't have to be an SSP kit, and uh, any similar receiver will have the same kind of wiring. So you've got here on the motherboard itself, Zoom all the way out. I'm not sure if you can see the labels very well. But you've got your ground is here, and your channel one is this far left pin, and channel four is this far right pin. So it goes channels one, two, three, and four on the signal pins. The ground pins are the far outside. So you've got on the speed controller a three pin and a one pin. Now Previously, I did this wrong. The new way that I recommend doing it works a lot better for the built-in mixing on this guy. So you're going to want to put the yellow as your channel one signal, and then the white as your channel two signal with the black facing the outside. This should ensure that the onboard mixing behaves the way that you want, along with reversing that M2 motor direction. So just for the sake of example, let's see how this actually behaves if we were to put it in the robot with the motherboard I already have in there. All right, so like I said before, your M2 is gonna be on the left side looking at the robot from the front, and your M1 is gonna be on the right side looking at the motor from the front. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape so that you can see the motor shaft spinning so you can see what directions they're going, uh, rather than adding the wheels back in right away. And then I'll show adding the wheels and showing that they turn with the belts and everything the way you want as well. So just to make this extra clear, we've got our R for right and our L for left there. So let's go over the uh, binding procedure here. So if you first connect the speed controller to your motherboard or to a power source, well, first let me do the signal wire. So like I said, your yellow is to the first channel signal, and then your white is to the second channel signal. So it should look like that. And then your power will just go, whoops, that white, or the yellow came unplugged. Power just goes to any available port on your PD board or whatever you're using. If you have a PD board in your robot, and then your battery, you'll need a battery for this step. We'll plug in right here. 
to the motherboard if you're doing an SSP kit or using the motherboard in some other application. And then all we have to do is turn it on with the power switch. But to bind to your radio, the first thing that you do before you turn on is there's a real little black button on the FS2A receiver if you're using the motherboard with an FS2A. You're gonna wanna hold that down while you turn it on. And that will enable binding mode on the FS2A. Of course, I don't have a T-handle next to me to grab. All right, so we're gonna hold the black button on the FS2A, turn on the motherboard, we see blue flashing light. Now, if you are using an FS2A transmitter, like this one, to bind, there's a little button down here that says bind key. So you just hold that and then turn the transmitter on. And then once you have all your switches up and your throttle down, you'll see that fast blinking stops. And now we are bound. and we were able to control the motors. Just for the hell of it, I'm gonna go over the binding procedure for the Radio Master Zorro as well. So on the robot side, it's the exact same. We're gonna turn the robot off, hold the black button on the FS2A, turn it on. Now, let me go over why some alternatives don't really work correctly with this speed controller. Um, so to show this, I'm gonna show the display on the transmitter and you'll notice something weird happens. Now if I go to display mode, channel one and channel two are the two that we care about. So this is up and down is channel two and left and right is channel one. Now if I push forward, you'll notice at a certain point, the motors start to spin, they just about start to spin together. If I push backward, however, there's a lot more travel that needs to happen before the motors start to go. Similarly, if I push to the right, one of them starts to go well before the other. And if I push to the left, the same sort of thing happens. So I had previously switched which channel was one and which was two, and then you had to like bias it super hard to one side because the forward and backward are asymmetrical, while the steering is symmetrical, but they don't start at the same time. And that was causing tons of problems for people. So, much simpler solution is just to wire it this way with one motor reversed, and that avoids all of those problems, and you end up with a robot that should more or less drive correctly. Now, you might see, still see one motor start slightly before the other. This can be corrected with a little bit of trimming to one side or the other. It'll be more apparent once the robot's on the ground and you'll actually see load on the wheels, but you can see here with basically center trim, it behaves more or less as you would expect, and that is good, that is what we want. So if you're using the onboard mixing on here, yellow to channel one, white to channel two, and then reverse your M2 motor and put that on the, if you're looking from the front to the left side of your robot, and you should get the correct drive behavior. If for some reason that doesn't work, if one of the motors is going the wrong way when you push forward on the stick, just reverse the wires to that motor and that should fix it for you. We're going to go for the FS2A, we need to set the internal RF from off to multi, and then set it to not fly sky, but fly sky 2A. And then leave the rest of these as defaults and we can just hit bind. And we should see that fast flashing stopped. Now if we hit bind again, we have control over the motors just as we would expect. Forward, left, right, backward, etc. So that fixes everything for the Zorro. I'm gonna set it back to the FS2A now, just because it's a little bit of a more budget-friendly radio and I figure more people will be using it. I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, PCBWay. Currently, PCBWay is having a ninth anniversary promotion, so that's 50% off of some 3D printing and CNC machining orders. There's a ton of coupons. There's coupons on flexible PCBs, regular PCB fabrication, PCB assembly, 
and like I said, CNC machining, which I've used for a number of projects in the past, including having a beta motherboard that was manufactured by PCBWay and a couple of chassis that were a CNC machine by PCBWay that I'll be using in future videos. So check them out at the link in the video description. Now let me show if you are completing an SSP kit, how you can actually get your wheels on here. So I'm actually gonna swap these out for the original Dragon motors I'd been using before. So you got your wheels, you press your hubs into the wheels, you got your set screws so that they're accessible via the holes. You grab your two millimeter hex wrench. You're going to want to pull out the set screw and put some green or some blue Loctite on it um, before you do this. So just pretend that I did that. Now you've got your motor that's red and black. It doesn't really matter which because we're gonna do the same wheel on both, but this one's gonna be on the right side. So we're just gonna put that up here. Tighten the set screw so that it sticks onto the flat of the motor shaft. Then we tighten the other one. That can just go anywhere on the shaft. Next we take our other rear wheel. We stick that on, do the same exact thing. Make sure we've got one that goes onto the flat of the motor shaft. I'm pushing almost all the way back as far as it goes. Then the other one onto the round part of the shaft. Now we've got the one that says red to black, black to red. That's going on the left side, so that's over here. If you had direct solder, this would be the M2 one. So we're going to plug in the M2. Oh, whoops, I forgot. You need to loop the belt through first. Then we connect M2 to this left one. Now you take your right side motor and we're gonna connect that here. And then that goes in there. I forgot the belt again. Then take your motor clamps. So you get your left side one, your right side one. I'm gonna turn the robot off because it really shouldn't be on during all this. T10 Torx bit and your Torx screws. That went a little far. Normal motor clamps won't switch like this one does, it's just because this one was printed in a regular nylon instead of carbon fiber nylon, so switch all the kits using carbon fiber nylon for a good reason there. There we go. And then you got your left one with its two screws as well. There we go. And now we could put the on this up and drive it around. Now you should have a robot that drives uh, relatively straight without needing to adjust the tr trims very much. So if I just put forward on the stick, it now goes forward. If I push backward, it goes backward. If I push left, it turns left. If I push right, it turns right. If you do a little bit left, only one side activates until you get really high speed to the left and the same opposite on the right. And pushing backward, there's a lot more dead zone on the stick before it starts to move than when you go forward. So I just have to get used to that a little bit, and it'll be pretty easy to control. All right, so directions are confusing. I think I've got the settings figured out correctly, and I made a handy dandy flowchart, which I'm hoping is correct. So it is on the user manual. If you look up the user manual in the link below or on the product page, you should find a handy dandy flowchart like this to show what settings you can change and what stick positions you need to do it. So to change the settings, you basically need to turn this off, set the stick to the position you want. So let's say I want to, well, let me show you what it does right now. So right now, I have braking disabled, so you see it coasts. If I want to enable braking, then I need to set the upper left position, so up and then left, and then turn on the robot. And now we see motors stop immediately because braking is now enabled. So that should carry for all these other ones. And this is with the wiring with uh, channel one yellow and channel two white. If you wire it the other way, I made a second flow chart here just so that there's reference for both. And here are the descriptions of what the different settings do. You can just read through this quickly or pause the video so you can get these or just look at the user manual. Uh, I haven't noticed too much difference with the current uh, batch of ESCs, changing linear mode or the initial strength, but you can definitely tell braking on and off. And for some reason, it won't seem to let me enable or disable mixing, but that should be fixed in future batches. Note that when you're changing the ESC settings, if you want to change multiple settings, uh, you will need to turn the robot off, do the thing to change your setting, and then turn it off again and do the thing to change your setting for the second setting, etc, etc. You can't change the settings more than once per power cycle, but as you just saw, it's pretty quick to do multiple.